Morning, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self-Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. What I thought we'd do today is come out here on the back of the property and try another NVIS experiment, Near Vertical Incident Skywave Propagation. And we're going to try to put our antenna at what Josh Noss calls deer antler height. So something around the four to five foot mark, completely horizontal. And we're going to work 40 meters. And again, the whole pretense of this NVIS experiment is to be able to communicate closer in than we could do with normal HF propagation, but further away than we could negotiate something like two meter through repeaters and things like that. So we're trying to stop gap our communications from very close local communications with something like two meters, 70 centimeters versus very far away signal propagation with HF radio you know, across several states. And now we're trying to close that in to within our state or the surrounding states for signal propagation with this NVIS antenna setup. And this works better, obviously, if you watched our last video, you see that on some of the frequencies, like 20 meters and above, it didn't work very well at all. We got down to 40 meters, it was better, but it wasn't perfect because we still had a lot of high height on our antenna. We were about 15, 18 foot in the air on a sloper. Now we're going to drop this thing down and have the whole antenna horizontal at about, again, four to five feet high. 40, 60, 80, those are going to be your best NVIS frequencies to be using, but we're going to start with 40 because that's a shorter length of antenna, takes up less room. Now, one caveat to this being able to lay our antenna horizontal is, and very low to the ground, is that there's not much setup to this. You can almost do this anywhere you needed to. You can string that line across a brush line, across a tree line, something like that, low to the ground, set your radio up, and you should be able to get NVIS communications fairly locally. And when I say locally, I'm talking anywhere from, you know, within 100 to possibly 500 miles. But we're going to experiment with it today and see what happens. We're going to use the same antenna that we used the other day. We're going to use our... Pac-10 and fed half wave. We've got our 40 meter element added. We're going to get this thing set up on a run here horizontally and check our SWR. Then we're going to hook up digital because that will give us the best indication of signal propagation, being able to visualize that. Then if we need to do phone or voice communication down the road, at least we know where our signals are propagating at at this point, and we'll have to do several experiments to get this down to where we want it and be confident with it. But this will be the first in those experiments. So stay with me, guys. We'll get this antenna rocking, and we'll get going. Okay, we're going to check our SWR right here at the feed point from the antenna at our coax connection. And 1.69, I'm not going to mess with that. I'm not going to adjust that. I think that's fine. If it was over 2, I'd mess around with it. But I think anywhere below 2 is good operating conditions for us, so we're going to stick with that. All right, let's get some coax cable on this bad boy and get hooked up. Okay, you can see we've got this Power Foam Lightsaver Max just up on our Jeep here with a couple magnets on the metal top in the sun. This is only a 10 watt solar panel, but you have an 18,000 milliamp brick here at the bottom that that's charging. And you're running your devices off the brick, not off the solar panel. So you're just trying to recharge the brick as you're pulling from the panel or when you're not pulling from, excuse me, when you're pulling from the brick or not pulling from the brick, this is charging the brick itself. This thing has multiple connections in it. We'll talk more about this Power Foam Lightsaber Max in another video, but I'm powering my radio off of that right now to get the full 10 watts from a 12 volt external source because this brick is 12 volts. It also charges and runs my laptop when needed. It charges and runs all of my handheld radios when needed. It will charge my cell phone, my drone. Every piece of electronic equipment I've got can be charged off of this single brick on this Power Foam Lightsaber Max. So it's a very, very awesome product to carry with me, both in the backpack and the Jeep, because it can also be recharged off of 110 or 12 volts by plugging it into the vehicle or plugging it into a wall socket if you want to quickly charge the brick back up. So it's a very versatile piece of equipment. And that versatility of being able to charge multiple devices, run multiple devices, recharge this thing on the fly if you need to by solar energy and not have to plug it into electric or into a vehicle, that's what makes this thing worth carrying in your kit. All right, so we've got a power hooked up to that. We're running 12 volts. That means we'll get 10 watts out of a radio 
We're going to turn on a digital program, turn the radio on, and see what we get with this Invis antenna. So let's talk about this Invis antenna. Okay, so on this Invis antenna, you can see off in the distance there, there's another bush out there. And that's where I started this Invis antenna for 40 meters, and I ran it straight over to this pine right here at the same height. So I'm running, again, about that deer antler height, as Josh Noss would say, and then coax cable straight to the radio. So again, you could set this antenna up very quickly and easily just across the brush in an open field if you needed to for quick communications. Okay, so we are set up on 40 meters here, 100% power. So we're running at 10 watts and we're already starting to decode meshes over here in the decode window. Now what we want to do is we want to look at Grid Tracker and look at PSK Reporter to see where our signals are propagating to. That's what's important about this whole Invis experiment. Then we'll try to make a couple contacts. Okay, we're talking to a guy right now. And this guy is in Washington, U.S. So he's in Maryland, I believe. You can see the signal right there, transmitting back and forth. That's a really close contact. He's given me a signal report. I've given him a signal report. They're really good. And that's about the end of the conversation. But that's a really good first contact being that close. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, I've started this grid tracker program. And you can see the spots on here are all very localized. There's nothing out here out west. Nothing real far south yet. And nothing real far north. All of these are very centralized. You've got a few of them in the northeast up there, a little higher up, but most of them are in very surrounding states. It looks like we've gotten down to almost Georgia and up into the edge of Michigan, maybe up into Pennsylvania and New England a little bit. But this is very, very much what we're looking for as far as a close proximity signal verification compared to what we'd be running with a you know, high-ended slope or 18, 20 feet in the air on 40 meters, we would be propagating further away than we are now. So the closer we can get, the better off we are. You can see there are a couple of them that are really, really close there, right on top of us almost. That's a great sign. All right, here's a guy we're talking to in Vermont. Talking back and forth with him right now. He just sent me a signal report. So again, fairly close, you know. Five, six hundred miles, probably. So, a couple shout outs, real quick, in this video. OH8STN. Name's Julius. He's over in Finland, but he's from America. He does fantastic off grid radio videos. If you want to know something, I would check out his YouTube channel as well as Ham Radio Crash Course, Josh Nost. The guy is phenomenally intelligent when it comes to radio in general but knows a lot about off-grid radio as well he's actually coming to the gathering as a special guest this year to teach intro to <clears throat> mcom so uh, if you're coming to the gathering this year you're going to meet him firsthand and get to take his seminar as well those two guys i would definitely check out we're getting exactly what we want stay with me and we'll check out a few more contacts we'll check out a few more propagation reports and we'll look and see what this invis antenna is doing on 40 meters all right, there's Missouri coming in right there. Signal report's pretty bad at minus 17, but it'll decode to minus 30. So it's not horrible bad. But again, he's pretty far away, so I would expect a signal report not to be that good because he's outside that realm of where we're really trying to communicate. We're trying to get closer. All right, here's another good verification of what we got going on with our antenna setup. SWR during transmit under 1.5. Now we've hooked a coax cable to it and it's to our radio. That's perfect SWR. Now we're done transmitting. It's showing the S meter again now. All right, we got another contact now in Charlotte, North Carolina on the hook. Signal report plus 22 from that guy. Holy crap. Looks like I got two guys on the hook at the same time here. All right, there's a guy right on top of us right here. So. He's either in Ohio or in Indiana. We'll have to look him up and see exactly where he's at. What's that signal report look like? 
plus eight, plus eight. That's good. Okay. Okay, that guy is in Montgomery, Ohio, is where he's at. Guy we're talking to right now. That's real close. That's perfect for Invis right there. And our signal report was plus two with him. That's good. Getting what we want. Okay, I'm getting a guy in Pennsylvania right now. Talking to him. Get this thing to focus a little bit for you guys. A little bit of a negative signal report from him down there a ways. But again, you know, that may be further away than we really want to talk anyway. But it's still close, probably within 500 miles. All right, so one of the great things about the versatility of this antenna is that it also has places where you can hook another wire to it to make it a center dipole. It has two ground wires to hook radials here. So I've taken another length of wire here that is approximately the same length as the 40 meter wire I'm already using. And I'm going to use that as a radial, which is gonna be very close in proximity to the other wire because it's only about four and a half feet, five feet off the ground and see if that makes a difference in our radiating pattern that we're getting for Envis and maybe gets us even closer than, you know, one state over. I'm trying to get a lot of stuff in Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky. Those are the signals I'm looking for. So let's see what that does. And you can see, I just plugged it in right here. Another banana clip plugged in with a wire. I've got strain relief on here. I'm not using right now because I've got the wire laying on the ground pretty much and not tight but I've got string relief for that set up. And this is just a radiating element for that 40 meter antenna. It's laying completely underneath horizontal to the other wire on the ground. All right, we're hitting the guy in Ohio right now. See if he comes back to us. That's exactly what I'm looking for. All right, we've got that guy in Ohio. We're right on top of that guy. He's in Greene County, Ohio. That's the kind of stuff I'm looking for. This is Envis communication. You can see surrounding areas of spots. Most of them are pretty close. Okay, I just hit that guy in Greene County. Now I'm trying to hit a guy in Muskegon County, Ohio. That's real close. So if I can hit that guy, that'll be three guys in Ohio. It looks like I did hit him. He just sent me back a signal report right there, minus four. There's our conversation going up there. So that's three guys fairly local in Ohio, probably within 100 miles I've hit with this setup. And I can't say it's getting better with that radial, but it may be because those guys in Ohio were not coming up as often as they are right now, but that could be more people on the band too. But you can see a really good concentration of spots around my area, around my location, since I put that radial on there. Yeah, I got a guy in Indiana I'm hitting right now, right in Indianapolis. Exactly what I'm looking for is that kind of communication out of this Envis setup. Perfect. Okay, guys, well, I'm really pleased with this Envis setup. I got two more Ohio contacts, an Indiana contact, and a Pennsylvania contact. Since I put that radial on there, I don't know that that made a ton of difference, but it seems to have made a difference. And I was told by a couple guys talking about Invis that sent me emails and stuff from watching my videos, that by running that radial directly underneath horizontally to the 40 meter antenna, I would get better Invis reception. And it seems to be the case. So again, the versatility of this pack antenna is fantastic. We've talked on four bands or used it for four different bands. We've used it for Invis. We've used it for normal HF propagation. The thing is just fantastic. And for what it weighs and the size it takes up in a pack, I would say that that's definitely a must have. We'll talk more about this Lightsaver Max by Powerfilm because it's another piece of gear that I've started using lately within the last month, but I really love it. And the more I use it, the more I love it. So as I use it more and more, we'll talk about it more and more as well. Of course, the ICOM 705 is the Swiss Army knife of all radios as far as I'm concerned. It will talk on every band, including two meters and 70 centimeters. It listens to weather, listens to FM. It does all of those things. Um, I just can't say enough about that radio and I'm not getting paid to sell any of this stuff. I don't sell any of this stuff. So this is not Dave, you know, trying to sell you something. I don't care what you buy. Um, I'm just telling you what I've got great experience with. And for me, 
that's part of the learning curve, you know, and I'm luckily I've got lots of guys that can tell me this is what you should buy if that's what you're looking to do so that I don't waste a bunch of money buying things I don't need. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do with you. If you're looking to do, you know, communications out of a backpack or out of the back of a vehicle and be mobile, I'm telling you these things are the things that you want to purchase. You may have to save up for them. They're not cheap by any means. They're not what you would probably call common man, although I consider that common sense and you buy the best that you can afford and you upgrade from there. So I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to save money and buy the best I can afford a piece at a time. But between the 705, the power film, and this pack tenner, and a handheld, there's not a whole lot you can't get done to communicate with another person or other people in surrounding areas, depending on how you set the equipment up. So I'm really, really happy with my setup. I appreciate you guys joining me for this video today on another couple tests on Envis on 40 meters without a radial, with a radial, low to the ground. Again, as Josh Nosh says, deer antler height. I appreciate everything you do for my school, for my family, for my business, for all my sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I'll be back with another video, guys, as soon as I can. Thanks.